Can x-rays identify a scoliosis? In order to diagnose a scoliosis, there has to be certain parameters met on specific conditions associated with the spine. First and foremost, there must be an unnatural sideways spinal curvature. The spinal curvature must have rotation, making scoliosis a three-dimensional condition. In addition, the curvature must be measured of 10 degrees or greater on something called a Cobb angle measurement. Now, a Cobb angle measurement is taken during an x-ray, and a Cobb angle is measured by drawing lines from the very top vertebra topmost tilted vertebra to the bottom most tilt tilted vertebra and it's measuring the angle between these two vertebras that results in an angle that's expressed in degrees. The curve apex can also be noted on this x-ray and this is the most horizontal vertebra within that curved chipe. Now the Cobb angle tells us how far out of alignment a patient's spine is and it classifies the scoliosis in terms of severity mild curvatures between 10 and 25 degrees, moderate scoliosis cases between 25 and 40 to 45, severe cases are 40 to 45 or greater, and then very severe is 80 degrees plus. Now, the scoliosis x-ray can not only tell you the severity, but it is also the way to get an official diagnosis of scoliosis. X-rays tell you the majority of things that you need regarding treating a patient with scoliosis. It can help craft an effective treatment plan and a very customized treatment plan for that patient. X-rays tell us what rotation is, how much rotation is present. Now, the majority of rotation is always towards the concavity of the scoliosis. We almost never see rotation to the convexity. We also tells us how severe this, un this curve is, what type of curve, what direction it's bending in, and where along the spine where the curve has located. It also tells us whether there's more than one curve because many patients have multiple curves, okay? Now, when we look at the scoliosis, especially the type of scoliosis, we talk about something called dextroscoliosis or level scoliosis. Now, dextroscoliosis is when a scoliosis bends to the right, and a level scoliosis is when the scoliosis bends to the left. Now, a level scoliosis is common in, in the lumbar spine, a left bending curve. A dextroscoliosis is uncommon in the lumbar spine, which is called a atypical scoliosis. So we look at these dextro and level scoliosis that they're typical to be in certain areas and atypical to be in other areas. So the lumbar spine I already mentioned, but it's also true in the thoracic spine. In the thoracic spine, we you know a dextro scoliosis is considered typical and a level scoliosis going to the left is considered atypical. Now atypical curves sometimes can be red flags. They can be a sign of an underlying pathology like a neuromuscular scoliosis, a congenital scoliosis, or even a degenerative scoliosis can sometimes be atypical. So looking at the curve type and where it's located, whether it's typical or atypical, help us design treatment plans and also help us design whether we need any additional testing to help determine if there is something abnormal in addition to the scoliosis occurring. Now, we know scoliosis x-rays are two-dimensional, but a scoliosis is a three-dimensional issue, meaning we're not only dealing with the curve, we're not only dealing with rotation, but it also affects the sagittal alignment or the side view of the spine, which can cause those curves to become a abnormal as well. So what happens with scoliosis patients is normally the doctor who understands scoliosis will take multiple views of, these, of the spine, not only from the front, but from the side. Very often we'll take x-rays under motion or movement, may even take sectional x-rays, and this will help us get look at the spine from every angle and help us to understand what is completely occurring in this person's spine to deliver the most effective treatment options for that patient. By using the most advanced digital x-ray technology with the highest accuracy and the least amount of exposure to radiation, these x-rays can provide us a very detailed picture of what's actually occurring in the spine and give us a biomechanical analysis of the scoliosis. This biomechanical analysis measures more than just the Cobb angle. It measures flexibility and motion. It measures segmental in, in, um, in integrity. It also measures alignment to gravitational forces. So we're looking not just at angles, at Cobb angles, but we're looking at many different factors to help us determine what's the most effective way of treating this person's scoliosis. And this is all done on just simple x-rays. And x-rays uh, can be done very, very effectively and very easily in a clinic to actually see what's going on. Now, not only are x-rays because they're so easy to take and they, be, they can be done so regularly, we can very often use x-rays not only to initially diagnose the condition, not only to, to determine what our current initial treatment plan is, but we can also use it to monitor how the patient's responding to treatment. So as patients are getting better, we wanna make sure the curves are actually improving and stabilizing 
but we can also use them to measure the effectiveness of the treatment we're actually performing. So we can take x-rays of patients in their brace or in different therapies or doing different exercises to see if they're performing or if the brace or all these things are done effectively to produce a corrective outcome. Because the rule of thumb when it comes to treating scoliosis, that upon application of the treatment, the treatment must reduce the curve structurally. If we're not seeing a structural reduction upon application, we consider that treatment to be ineffective in structurally altering the scoliosis and its progressive nature. So therefore, we can actually look at that specifically one by one, and we can look at x-rays of a patient that's actually in treatment to see is this going to produce a predictable result? So x-rays provide very significant insight into what's not only happening inside the spine, around the spine. It can also help us determine how effective treatment's being. It helps us monitor their spine. And it also helps us develop a very specific treatment program based upon the details that are shown on these x-rays. When x-rays are interpreted by a doctor who specializes in scoliosis, these x-rays reveal a tremendous amount of information regarding the scoliosis and its presentation and are very effective in helping managing the treatment of that patient. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.